Hi, and welcome to another mini episode of the Cat Lady Podcast. I'm Andrea, the Cat Lady. It's two T C A T T. Craft all the things. Um, my mini episodes are usually my little tutorials on things I'm working on or things that some people uh, have asked about. So this will be one of them. Uh, I had someone ask uh, how I do my mitered squares for my sock yarn blanket. So uh, I use it's a pattern name is like just generic mitered squares. Um, and I pretty much follow that, but I've added a few things and tips I've heard from some other people as far as how I, uh, how I join it, how I just manipulate the stitches on the ends and everything. So I will go through how I join a square. So here's my blanket so far, just nothing, nothing too crazy right now, but I am ready to join another square. And I will do some editing in this so you're not going to painfully watch me cast on each stitch because I'm it takes me forever to cast on. <laughs> I'm a slow caster on her. So um, you can find me on Instagram as the Cat Lady Ravelry, the Cat Lady Podcast uh, group. And sorry, it's fairly bright in here. See the lights kind of. Um, and yeah, I'm the Cat Lady most places. So that's the C A T T L A D Y. So let's begin. So I'm using. My next color is blue, and this was given to me by a friend, a video chat friend, Ramona. So it's, I think it's, I think this might be one of the ones she dyed herself. I don't remember. Um, but anyway, so the last, the end that I cast off is where I'm going to start, and with the front of the work facing me. Sorry, see that light. <laughs> Uh, with the front side facing me, so that's the back, this is the front, I will start picking up, and my stitch count for my squares are 41 stitches. So I need to pick up 21 stitches along this edge and then cast on 20. Um, and the way, and I'll talk about how I do the my beginning and last stitches while I'm knitting, it's supposed to make it easier to see to pick up stitches, because I mean, I kind of can, I have little kind of notches, like little holes that are pretty easy it's hard to see up close, but uh, the camera's on the side, but you know, I, it's like this perfect little stitch that I can pick up. Um, as far as getting the 21 on the side, I do struggle a little bit. Um, so I tend to start sometimes as low as I possibly can, sometimes into like below, like my cast off spot. Um, and then sometimes I'll need to go like above, which you know, my corner up here rounds, so it makes it a little challenging. So, you know, when I get here, I'll sometimes pick up my last stitch, kind of looks like I'm going across the top, but, and you'll see, like, you know, it's like, it's kind of like the top, but it, it makes it flow nice and straight there. So, you know, it looks like it's kind of going off to the side there, but that's okay. That's just, just the way we're going to do it, so. I will start to cast on and I will fast forward this part so you're not watching this particularly. Okay, I'm going to stop here to say something real quick. So, even though it looks a little silly, and but again, this is for me, I really don't care about the aesthetics that much. I actually will pick up the tail from the previous square and then so I, so I picked up my, my first stitch here with just the blue, and I have the tail, which is a little long, let's make it a little shorter, the tail, I have the working yarn, and then I have my tail for the old square. I will take all three of those and pick up about four more stitches. That way I don't have to weave in my ends. So let me get closer again. So if you see here on the last one, you can see where I carried the purple and the red. My red's really long. Um, all down a few stitches. So now I just need to snip that and that's done. I don't have to weave in the ends because I already knitted in. So it makes, and like right here, I did it, you know, I did this one too. So it shows a little bit on the front. You know, you can see like where the red pops in there. Um, but 
it doesn't matter. I like, I prefer not to have to weave in the ends. And I just started doing that. And actually I had the Canadian in her podcast, she had mentioned doing that. And I'm like, that's a pretty good idea. Um, cause I don't like weaving in ends. I don't know what I'm doing with the back of this, if I'm going to back it with something or anything, but for now I prefer to have the ends just weaved in. So that's how I do that. And so then I just snip those and be done. Makes it a, you know, it's a little thick right there, but I mean, it's like four stitches and again, it's not like I'm wearing it really. It's a blanket. So back to the cast arm. I'll stop again and see if I can show you a close up. It's kind of hard, but you kind of see, where's my camera? I'm kind of going into this hole and looping the stitch through. I mean, it's a very distinct hole. I'm looping the stitch through. Whoop. And I don't even know if I'm doing this the right way. You know, this is just the way I do it, so. Picking up stitches has never been something I've enjoyed. Okay, I have 21 stitches. Picked up from the side of this one. So now I need my other 20. So now I turn it so the back is facing me. And I do, I don't know what it's called. I don't know if the cable cast on, um, it's not a knitted cast on. I tried the knitted cast on and I wasn't having troubles with it. It was too loose. The edges, stitches were too loose. So what I do is I stick the needle in between the two stitches. So again, I'm sorry if that doesn't focus, but it's not through the stitch. It's in between where the two stitches are. And then I do make my loop, pull it up, put it on. And usually then when I have that one on, I stick the needle in and then pull it tight. So then it's automatically between. The two. Put it through and pull my loop through, put it on, and then I try to get the needle in there before I pull it tight. I always have to re tension my yarn, and that's what I do. So, for 20 stitches. Okay. I have 41 stitches, 21 from the old, the old square, the previous square, and 20 new ones. So now, since we're on the back side, we just knit this row, and to start each row, again, these are just tips I've heard, and I don't know if they make any difference at all, but I slip the first, first stitch purl-wise. And, then, and I do this on every row, and again, I don't know if you're supposed to do it in every row, or if you're just supposed to do it in the front, or just on the back, or whatever, but then I knit the row. And since I'm on the back, I'm knitting the entire row. Okay, so now I've gotten to the bulky three strand stitches, so you just gotta be careful with them. Make sure you get all three of those strands, and just knit them as usual. And then when you get to the final stitch, I find that it's a little loose when I do that whole loop to begin and loop and then pull the working and the tail together. So it's a little loose at the front, but it doesn't matter. It evens out and I don't care, <laughs> honestly. But you'll notice it is a little looser than the rest of the stitches. Um, but and when I get to the end of a row, I knit, probably, I don't know if you can see it. I have something blocking the screen. I knit through the back loop. And again, this is just one of those things that I read is supposed to help with making a neater edge for when you're picking up your stitches. So then you're on your right side. So you know, the little purple pokes through a couple stitches, no big deal. And I'm working on double points, which is ridiculous, but I don't have small circulars. So like half the time my stitches are almost going to fall off the edge. So it's a little tricky, but whatever, I like a challenge. Um, so yeah, now you start knitting as normal. And again, I would purl the first stitch, knit to the center, which in my case is 19 stitches. And then you have three, set, three center stitches. And I do the central double decrease, bleh, which is knit three together. So I get to the center, three, knit three together, knit the rest, slip, uh, so knit the 
last stitch through the back and repeat until I get to the end and bind off or whatever. Not really a bind off, there's one stitch left. <laughs> um, trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, so, so that's, and I'm still on row one, of course, so. Now, as far as building up, you just gotta really keep note on which direction you want that line to go, because, you know, if you look, you're casting on, and it's, it's essentially going to be bending over this way. So, you know, all your, your lines are going to work. So, when I start building upwards, I'm going to want... Yeah, okay, so I'm going to pick up the stitches along the bottom here then cast on my stitches and that should make yeah if I start from this side go for it and that's gonna be the so yeah <laughs> sorry so now I'm now I'm going to be backwards so it's getting even harder for me to explain so I'm gonna start on this the this end pick up my stitches cast on my other stitches and then it's gonna fold down so that my line's gonna go this way so then I'm gonna have another square there when I get to that square I'm gonna do pick up, I really hope you can see that, pick up from this side here, and then pick up 20 from this side. Now here, and then this is where it gets, not tricky, but you gotta pay close attention to where that line is, because you wanna pick up that 20, number 21, that middle stitch. You want it to be right in line with your diagonal stripe so that they line up. So I'm gonna be picking up my 20, and I'm gonna make sure 21 is that center and then pretend there's a square here then I'll do another 20 down that way so then when I'm knitting it and it's gonna fold down like this my lines gonna line up hopefully perfectly with with this existing line so that all the lines don't look crooked it's a good thought at least so I don't know how long I'm making this yet it's getting a pretty decent size but you know it's not quite it's not even quite wraparound size, so, you know, I'm thinking it needs to be wraparound two people size. Um, so I got a ways to go, so I mean, and probably double, probably double the size, I don't know. So, and I could start building up if I wanted. Sorry, I'm cutting my head off, but I'm in a weird spot. Because, um, I mean, you could just kind of keep adding wherever you want, but I kind of wanted to do a long line and then start building it up or down or whatever so that's all I got hope that helped you out um, tune in next week for a regularly maybe regularly scheduled program uh, next week is Labor Day so I usually record on Monday so Labor Day's on Monday so I don't know if I'm gonna get to record on Monday or if I might be able to squeeze one in over the weekend and then Tuesday's my daughter's first day of school so it's gonna be a very hectic week next week I really don't want to skip a week but it might I might need to so I will keep everyone updated on the Revelry board as well as Instagram. So I hope everyone has a good weekend and I will see you next time. Bye.